join me, author and artist Bruce Sparks, and narrator Sam Stark in creating an own voices audiobook of the contemporary mystery and magical realism novel, The Fable of Wren. On the backdrop of a small southern town surrounded by enigmatic forests, Wren and the cinnamon roll city boy Jethro delve deep in the town's past to solve a mysterious death. The Fable of Wren by Rue Sparks The shattered glass crunches under my stumbling footsteps. I reach out trembling fingers to steady myself on ash-covered walls, paint flaking under my fingertips. In my mind's eye, the room is a pristine, disfigured paradise, built without blueprints and crooked in places, a patchy perfection that spoke of love and determination. Before me now, the eye of the hurricane, the moment when everything broken hangs in denial, frozen cries of disbelief hover in my throat, not yet thawed enough to form. Tomorrow I will wonder, how will I survive the wreckage? And the world will be turned on its side, along with everything in it. For now, my heart cracks in the very first moment when the home we'd built for ourselves became for me instead of us. Hey y'all, I am author and artist Rue Sparks. The Fable of Wren is my third published work and my first full-length novel. I'm excited to see this project grow into an audiobook. As someone who is disabled, I understand how important it is to have audio versions available of fiction, especially fiction that focuses on trans experiences. Now more than ever, as our social and political climate becomes harder for the trans community, we need to see this kind of representation in our media to demystify who we are to allies and the wider world, and also to help trans readers remember that their experiences are valid, that they are not really alone as much as they can feel that way in the current landscape. When I say this is a quiet mystery, what I mean is that Ren's story is less about what they've been through and more about the people they love and have loved. This has been my most personal book to date. It's a raw and uncensored look into grief on the back of a story that is magical, offbeat, and a bit eccentric. Originally meant to be much shorter, the Fable of Wren slowly transformed into my reconciliation with the loss of my wife in 2017. The book was released in October 2021, and this was on purpose. My wife and I married in October 2009. It's no mistake that the dedication is a poem written to her. In truth, the whole book is an ode to her life and how she has changed me for the better, even after her death. This may sound depressing and maudlin, but it is actually a book about hope and finding a path forward. Grief cannot be rushed or prettied up. Sometimes a Hollywood ending isn't in the cards, but this does not mean that we can't still find ways to put one foot in front of the other. It doesn't mean we can't love again, even if that love looks different than before. That is Ren's story. If you take nothing else from this book, let it be this. Grief is the final evolution of the relationship we have with the ones we loved. And though it is painful, when we let ourselves grieve, that love is never lost, only transformed. Hello, my name is Sam. I wanted to greet you the best way I know how, with my voice, and throw a couple of quick thoughts at you. First off, I think there should be more stories like this one. Stories featuring a trans person that are real and complicated and not just about their transness, if that makes sense. Second, I am a believer in these kinds of stories being told by trans people. And so I, as a non-binary transmasculine person, I'm so happy and so honored to be narrating Rue Sparks' book, The Fable of Wren. Prologue. I run, adrenaline thick like mud in my veins. My heart beats in my brain, a loud thump to accompany the pounding of my feet on the forest floor. I try not to think of what I've left behind in the woods and what might be happening. If I do, I won't be able to run anymore. I'm close now. 
I can see the brick of buildings and concrete through the edge of the trees. The thought should give me a burst of strength. The adrenaline drains from me like flour through a sieve. No, I have to keep going. I push my exhausted limbs further, further, just a little further. I come through the edge of the tree so suddenly that the change from leaf litter to grass trips me. My knees hit the edge of the grass, and the heels of my hands slap down hard onto cracked pavement. It stings and knocks the breath from me, but I don't have time for pain. I allow myself three breaths. One, two, three. Then with a choked sob, I push myself up on shaky legs and run along the pavement through the parking lot at Jay's Diner toward the entryway. I throw open the glass doors and I'm screaming for help before I can form a coherent thought. The shocked faces around me are a blur, the blood pounds in my ears, and I try to speak the words to get them to move. Ran? The words, soft and cajoling, like speaking to a child, grate on my nerves, but I clutch onto them like a lifeline. What happened? What's wrong? Hands carefully touch my arms and lead me forward, deeper into the cooled air of the building. I choke out a sob, but that's wrong. There's still time. In the woods, I say instead. Please help. The rest of the story overflows like a waterfall. The reaction is immediate, and the next few minutes become a blur of, Get the sheriff. You'll be okay, Rand, don't worry. And, please sit down, you're bleeding. I'm led to a stool where someone puts a damp, cool towel around my neck to try to soothe my overheated body. I'm shaken as I clutch weakly at a glass of water. I want to pass out, to let my bones relax into the chair and let my whole body recover down to its atoms. What I need is to know he's okay. I give up on the water, set that and the towel on the counter, and pace like a wild animal. I watch for the sheriff and debate running back to find him myself. Hot tears streak silently through dirt down my cheeks that I can see in the glass doors. I ignore the alternately concerned or rubbernecking stares of the diner patrons as we wait, ashamed of them seeing my weakness, but too tired to put up a front. When the sheriff comes what feels like hours later with the ambulance and a search and rescue crew, I think that they'll find him and he'll be alright. I breathe. For just a moment, I think it's all going to be okay. <laughs>